Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Business and the Sillyville Edition. Let's go ahead and jump right on in because we actually have a lot of business news. All right, first, Microsoft is doing yet another test inside of Edge. People are, hey, Microsoft, just an FYI for any Microsoft people listening, people hate all the crap you're jumping into Edge. Okay, just give us a browser that does nothing but go to the website we tell you to go to. We don't need everything else in here. Now they're adding an RSS feed that will allow you to subscribe to your favorite YouTube content creators. So when you boot up Edge, you'll have a tab always annoying you that, hey, the video you watch has a new video. I think, Thank you. My YouTube time is tomorrow, you know, um, or whatever else. But anyway, uh, this is uh, in the latest Canary updates, which is the upcoming tests. And it's not even pushed to everybody. It's just an experiment pushed to some people. And you can see yet another time. Look, look at how many tabs. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, this is your web browser. What in the hell is all this stuff going on? What is this stuff? We got this thing. We got the, is this the A broadcast? Is this, is Edge now broadcasting your internet to your devices? Here's your follow creator on your, on your uh, individual YouTube channels. Uh, we have link outs. We have your subscribes. And then, you know, everything else we had up here is going to be up here. Your gaming thing we talked about. We talked about your, um, oh Lord, everything, everything. So they're adding more stuff. Pretty soon you won't be able to type an address in the address bar. There's going to be all these experiments across the side. And then they'll wonder why why Edge gets even worse uh, followers than you know Firefox these days. I don't know. That's why. Microsoft, stop messing around with Edge. People do not want crap. They want a web browser that does nothing but browse the web. Period. Well, now we have autonomous battery-powered rail cars to steal more drivers. Um, so these things here, it's, it sounds really like, look, look at how beautiful this is in the countryside. You're going down in a little train. And basically what happens is the shipping container drops it on this uh, autonomous train that's running on electric, clean electric power in it. Cause do, 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 trucking on down the road. They're not showing it going through Los Angeles where if you didn't see the videos this week, where all the homeless bums that are looking for stuff goes onto the railroad tracks and basically looted an entire train. I mean, Jesse James has got nothing on all y'all. Um, he comes in here and just busts the whole thing in looting for all sorts of things, all sorts of Amazon packages, all sorts of goodies. Of course, they left all the all the uh, the koofy koofy tests and other things that were fairly useless. Stole all the electronics, leaving a giant dumpster on the train tracks. Yeah, how's this little electric train gonna go ahead and stop that? It's, it's like it's gonna be a do 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 meandering down. Meanwhile, there's gonna be all these homeless guys hanging around to the side of the car, inside of it, throwing packages out. Things gonna be a smile. It's gonna come on in. They're gonna open it up, and it's gonna be completely empty. It's like, wait, where'd all your crap go? I don't know. But anyway, we do have these new uh, a battery-powered rail cars. Um, so, yeah, there we are. We have a, a bright new world to look forward to. Of course, the truckers are going to be out more jobs. So, you know. The airlines, uh, more 5G stuff. So maybe all these 5G lunatics were right when they're like, don't deploy 5G everywhere because it's like the military's like, yeah, this is messing with our GPS. And the weathermen are like, hey, this is messing with our ability to predict the weather. And therefore, we cannot, we're basically losing a day or two on hurricane notices. But don't worry, we can all download the latest episode of Squid Games in 3.2 seconds, despite it still takes you half an hour to watch the stupid show. Okay? This is unnecessary. Necessary nonsense. Our first war of problems are actually going to cause airplanes to crash for crying out loud. So they deploy the 5G all around the airports. It turns out that when a plane needs to rely on the instruments to land, 5G interferes with those instruments. And so a whole lot of planes have been grounded. Some airlines have banned all planes flying to uh, any airport which has 5G operating in less than uh, two miles. From the range now, the FAA is like, "Hey, uh, maybe we'll let them go on." Then the FCC is like, "Oh, everything's completely safe." And Verizon and AT and T are holding back, and they're not deploying 5G within two miles of airports now, so that planes can safely land. That's good. Hey, the plane crashed, but everybody got their Squid Games really quick. I mean, come on, guys, come on. First world problems here. But as of right now, uh, most of these are, are running now. There were several delayed and canceled flights because of this. 
Uh, United says it faces significant restrictions on 787, 777s, 737s, and regional aircrafts in Houston, Newark, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Chicago. I do believe that is most of the big airports in this country. Maybe we should rethink this 5G and, I don't know, listen to the crazy conspiracy theorists and study 5G before you deploy it everywhere? Just a thought. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know down below what you think. Am I now reliquated to the crazy guy? Too bad I'm sitting on my tinfoil hat. All right. Um, if you are using the legacy G, uh, G Suite, I almost said G Squid Games. Yeah, the, the legacy G Suite um, free edition, you are going to either lose your data or start paying for it. So these are accounts created, I think it's from 2009 to 2012, I think. Um, up to 2012, they started rolling out free Google Suite packages, which even allowed you to use a domain name. These might have been the ones where you could even get a server space for free and things like that. All of that goes away um, in, is it May? July? I think it's July. All of that's going away. You are either going to lose all of your data or you're going to have to start paying for those services. All right. So uh, just uh, keep an eye out for that. We have a starter. We have a standard business pro. I think the standard is where you can use your domain name. I don't know. You'll have to check their website. Um, but anyway, uh, just an FYI, if you happen to be using those services, then those are some of the things that uh, to keep in mind. Well, astronomers, we, we have now a whole line of Elon Musk stuff. We got Elon Musk stuff from several of his companies. I couldn't find anything from the boring company. It's just too boring. But anyway, as far as Starlink goes, astronomers are finding a growing number of Starlink satellite tracks. So basically, the satellites all over crisscrossing everywhere, some of these uh, the telescopes and things that we are using to study the planet has to take a... Uh, an image over a period of time and these satellites keep on blurring down so literally everything we get now from these astronomers is going to have these Starlink satellite lines all through them so hey the good old days of having wonderful night skies to look up to they are now over thanks Elon Musk but hey at least we all have broadband satellite now and we can download our squid games really really fast just not quite in three seconds it's going to take us about five minutes instead but uh, we will lose the ability to see all these. And the astronomers are going, hey, guys, this is yet another example of the government pushing some big business who paid them some money to get something up there without actually knowing what it's doing. This is a problem. 5G posing a problem. All these Starlink satellites posing a problem. Um, Self-driving technology, as we're going to see shortly, causing a problem. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, so here is a uh, number of deployed satellites. So this is how many satellites they're deploying. Um, September 21. Oh, these are actual numbers. Number of affected images. So the images, uh, we had numerous individual images were, um, uh, were impacted over 200, uh, about 225 or so at peak images impacted. There's a lot of these images are getting messed up with these satellites. So something to keep in mind before we litter 37 billion satellites all circling the face of the planet. I mean, how do we expect to get our rockets past all these satellites to get to Mars? We're going to like, we're going, and then we're going to crash into an Elon Musk Starlink satellite and the whole thing's in the sky. It's going to be quite impressive. Challenger level events. Well, Elon Musk has the Neuralink company, and the Neuralink company is the brain implant type company that may or may not have inspired my science fiction novel. Well, he is now hiring a clinical trial director to do human experiments to see what happens when you put these individual implants into people's heads and start turning them on. What could possibly go wrong? But uh, anyway, there it is. And on to our feature article for for the day, the very first ever Tesla autopilot charges have been filed. This is interesting. Now, I do have some people from time to time, and it's mostly it's the Tesla fanboys are coming in the comments like, you're just proving how biased you are. Uh, no, I'm just reporting on stupid technology, okay? So here we have a self-driving car. 
And we have to address this question legally before we deploy self-driving cars on the road. Who is actually responsible? Now, in this case here, this is not the full self-driving beta. This is the autopilot. This is the crash, and we reported on it here on the news. In 2019, the people have autopilot on. Autopilot left the intersection. It failed to stop for a red light, and it T-boned a Honda Civic, killing both people on board. And the investigation has concluded that uh, the indeed the people were not paying attention and um, the uh, autopilot was engaged. And so in this particular case, the people are being charged with felony manslaughter um, because hey, they failed to control their Tesla. And that's really going to be telling what's going to happen. So if I own a car with full self-driving, am I still going to be responsible? What if there's no driver in the seat? Who is going to be responsible for it then? These are questions that our society has to answer and be ready for before they actually happen. We need to have these answers before we unleash this technology on the road. So in this case here, in this particular crash, the uh, this is not the full self-driving. This is, you know, of course, in the autopilot, not according to the ads, the marketing and all the cool stuff, um, but according to the actual owner's manual and the actual instructions. Yeah, you're supposed to be monitoring. You're supposed to have your hands on the wheel at all times. You're supposed to be fully paying attention. Apparently, these guys weren't because they did not stop their car as it left the interstate, continued to drive, ran a red light, and killed two people. So very interesting to see. And uh, the next question is, what's going to happen when it's full self-driving? Who's responsible then? Very interesting. Well, I did mention the fact that I do have a science fiction novel. It is called Synaptergy, and it may or may not have been um, inspired by Neuralink. You can have a look at the website synaptergy.com or tlm.li forward slash s. This will get you over to this page here. We have a listing of places where you can pick it up. There might be other places as well. Anywhere you like to purchase your books online, you can probably find it over there. And you can read the first chapter or you can listen to the first five minutes with SoundCloud. Of course, my privacy badger is blocking it, but go ahead and allow it and you can listen to the first uh, five minutes of the book on SoundCloud. So anyway, have a look over at synaptergy.com uh, if you'd like to... Um, <laughs> see a little bit more about that. Anyway, let's head on over to Sillyville. First up in Sillyville, well, somebody Zoom bombed the Italian Senate meeting with Final Fantasy VII uh, nasty stuff. So apparently uh, they're getting on doing some Italian Senate type stuff and all of a sudden this lady jumps on and starts, I don't know, engaging in activity with an orc, I guess. I'm not sure. Can I honestly say I didn't go and seek out the video, but yes. And then <laughs> the views over here are priceless. You got the lady over here. She's like, ah, oh. you got the two guys on icons. They're uh, they're in the background tubing it right now. Like my camera's off, right? My camera's off. Um, and then this guy here with the red glasses down here, right by this heart, he looks definitely, and this guy over here, he is really into it. I mean, this guy's like, excuse me, can we table the rest of the minute points for a moment? This new contributor would like to say something. Um, but yeah, um, uh, zoom bombing is still a thing. So make sure that you are locking up them, uh, them zoom meetings, folks. Well, it might have been an accident, but uh, Google approved an ad for a Target gift card spam, uh, scam. So, yeah, the gift card spams where you're getting on there and, you know, someone calls you up. I, uh, I will fix your computer. All right. Now what you need to do, you need to go to the Target and get yourself some gift cards and send me the numbers on those gift cards. You know, um, so, you know, they put a, um, yeah. Google approved the ad. I don't know why. I, I mean, I, I I run a couple Google ad accounts for some of my clients, and we can't get some ads approved for nothing. It's like, why? I don't know. Like my book, Synaptergy, we just talked about it. I can't run ads for that book on Amazon. They say that the cover depicts human suffering, but Google can approve an ad for a gift card scam. Oh, well. Such is life, I guess, right? Such is life. And on to our final one, talking about Teslas and crashing. Um, this Tesla Model 3 owner discovered that the car was delivered without a brake pad. 
And then it took six weeks, and they still weren't able, were not able to get in there. The people, company's like, well, we don't have any spare brake pads for you. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Just, just send us information on your uh, on your phone app, and we'll diagnose it over the phone. Oh no, that's perfectly normal. So yeah, this Tesla um, goes without brakes, and it's the back one back here. So uh, the mechanic gets in there. There, um, I, I guess they didn't have the full the pictures, uh, did they? Yeah, I think here's a picture of the inside. No brake pad, just scraping against the against the the rotor. Needs new caliper, new rotor, and a new brake pad now because it wore itself out. Uh, a lot of problems here. And then Tesla's like, well, you know, I can't really fix it. Uh, we can't wait. And so the fortunate part about this is this is in Florida, which has very strong lemon laws. So she's hiring an attorney and telling Tesla, you need to take your car back and give me a full refund. And she'll probably get it because that's how the laws in Florida work. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. Just be be aware, guys. Be aware. Tesla's out there. Um when they're not trying to run into the back of emergency vehicles at full fledge and they you see these Teslas being jerks all around you, they might not even have brake pads in them. So why not? In fact, the Tesla almost ran into me the other day trying to show how awesome he is taking his Tesla from zero to 65 and 3.2 seconds passing on the right while I was in the process of trying to move to the right. Moron. If I wasn't such of a good driver, he would have bashed himself in the back of my van. And I promise you there'd be nothing left because I got so much momentum in here. There ain't nothing left in your Tesla, buddy. So, uh, but, you know, morons. Anyway, I did see a Tesla crash into a semi on, on video. I, I didn't see it in real life. But anyway, just be aware. Teslas, they might be brakeless. Well, you can help support the channel over on Patreon, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. You can jump on over there, help support the channel. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.